Hey Phantom Quadcopter Flyers, let's talk about the Aero X-Craft GoPro Gimbal. This uh, little unit uh, is going to be replacing my wire mount, my normal jelly mount. It's designed and built in the United Kingdom and is about half the cost of the Zen Muse. Um, the Zen Muse has had a lot of performance issues as well as the fact that you have to access the NASA controller inside and do some configuration. This little unit very quality built in the United Kingdom and sent over here actually comes ready to go. The Nomo uh, Jello mount actually did a good job, you know, I was pretty happy with that. But this one, first of all, let's talk about how it attaches. Four points, two in the landing skids, two simple screws, and uh, where the camera had attached before, two more there. There's a power supply for it that cross drops out of the Phantom um, when you, but it comes uh, with the Phantom and uh, it, it might have to take the top shell off to get at it. All the guts are on board, so it doesn't have to access the NASA. That does expose the parts, which uh, is one of the negatives. The GoPro sits inside a silicon damp and a little box with a carbon fiber plate. Uh, the whole gimbal itself is attached with carbon with uh, silicon uh, dampeners as well. Power supply, as I say, does come from the Phantom battery, so that uh, the two brushless motors, when they're going, will also be a modest drain on that battery and will reduce flying time. Let's look at some comparisons. The wire mount, you know, for something that costs about $30, actually does a pretty darn good job. And uh, you do spend a lot of time editing it later. Uh, so every time the Phantom moves forward or backwards or sideways, you get that big fisheye bulge in there, as well as just the general vibration coming from the props. Very well dampened on the gimbal. Very little native vibration being transferred to the GoPro here. What you do see, which is kind of interesting, is the fact that because the, the Phantom is constantly adjusting itself in the air, you know, with the wind, with GPS, with the way you're flying it, the props dip in and out of the frame. And uh, you don't really notice that otherwise because the camera is always fixed in the frame with the props. So that might bother you enough that you want to edit it out. Uh, and that's just. And that GoPro uh, that I'm using here is set on wide angle, so it's probably picking up more of the props in the frame than it normally would. In terms of usability and editing, uh, you can, the wire frame, um, if I had wire mount, it's a lot of editing in Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere for post stabilization. I did a lot of rotational and translational stabilization, which would take maybe two hours for every three or four minutes of video. The gimbal is right out of the box, beautifully smooth. There's almost nothing required to edit it. Uh, you're not going to be sitting waiting on your computer forever to uh, make some nice looking video in there. Again, you'll have to do something with those props if they bother you, but uh, you won't be doing a lot of smoothening. None of these videos had any post uh, stabilization done to them. Another issue is exposure. The electronics on board and wiring are all exposed. Um, the GoPro does not have its plastic case. There is no protection from salt water, wind, dust. You're going to have to think about that when you're flying. You may want to hand carry or hand uh, land. You may want to take off in areas that have no dust potential or, or moisture potential. Um, it's definitely going to change the way you want to fly uh, a little bit more cautiously. And how you're going to fly is also going to change. Because you're running now two brushless motors, uh, in addition to the 120 grams of extra weight of the gimbal, your battery life will not be as long as it was before. I found that I went from about seven to eight minutes of battery time, uh, safe battery time with uh, the wire mount and the plastic box uh, in a Go GoPro. With this setup here, I'm down to about five and a half minutes. And when those red lights start flashing, saying that I'm running out of juice, they really mean I'm running out of juice. I've only got another 30 seconds after that. So you want to keep an eye on it in that last minute or two. And the performance suffers a little bit as well. You are carrying uh, another 15% you know, extra weight so that when the Phantom descends, you'll find that it's a little bit slower to recover from the descent, so you don't want to come down as fast. And also, as the battery life starts to get tired, as that battery goes into its third or fourth minute of use, uh, it will not respond quite as 
actively as it might have before. You won't be able to lift up quite as actively, uh, turn quite as sharply as it does on a fresh battery. So again, in the last uh, minute or so of your battery life, start thinking about bringing that quad back to you uh, quietly, safely. Don't go freaking out because uh, that battery is going to start uh, petering out pretty quick. And you might want to buy another one or two as well, just because they're cheap and they, uh, they'll give you a lot more editing, video editing time. So in all, uh, I am pretty pleased with that Aero XCraft gimbal. Uh, I've read a lot of poor reviews of other difficult install or, or poorly built uh, gimbals. I've seen nothing wrong with this one. It's given me no issues. It performs perfectly in terms of uh, what I was expecting. There are issues with gimbals in general, and uh, I think they probably apply to all gimbals, but uh, I will mention them specifically about this one here. What you'll find is that there's a lot of wiring and stuff hanging out there. The quad doesn't fly quite as sharply. Batteries don't last as long, and you have to be more careful. However, this is a well-built unit. It's a snap to install, and it does exactly as promised video from it is rock solid smooth, very impressive and really has opened up the video, aerial video for me again. Thanks for watching and happy flying!